<laughs> the following series was recommended by Rosie. If you would like to send me a series to check out, please see the email in the description below. Sins of the Past is an analog horror series from YouTube user Forky. The series has been covered a couple times before, but I wanted to give my own take on it. As of now, the channel has a total of 7 uploads. All of these theories expressed in this video will stem from these 7 uploads alone. Thank you guys so much for stopping by, and if you enjoy content like this, please be sure to subscribe. The first episode of Sins of the Past is called Interference. It opens with a date, February 20th, 1977. Text then informs us that the following footage has been tampered with. As we will soon come to find out, the footage is not just your typical home video-like material. It's something much more abstract. The title, Interference, is fitting because the next text on the screen tells us that we are missing parts of what we are about to see. The following voiceover is from one of our main characters, named Bill. Bill tells us that he desperately wants to know more about his daughter's dreams, specifically who is controlling them. Another character, named King, responds to Bill. King tells Bill that they will take a journey together down Charlotte's Hall of Dreams. A loading screen appears before we hear audio of what sounds like a little girl pleading for her life. This little girl is named Tia. She is Bill's youngest daughter. We are then transported to Charlotte's Hall of Dreams, which looks to be a retro-style arcade. We travel through the arcade in a POV fashion. The movement is a little disorienting as it is fashioned after an 8-bit game. 8-bit is a common theme throughout the entirety of this series. We are then presented a flashlight before we find a shadow of Tia hiding in a dark corner of the arcade. We then teleport to a different part of the arcade. Text at the bottom lets us know that Charlotte, who is presumably the one experiencing all of this, knows that this is a dream and wishes to wake up. She expresses some disdain, commenting that if she had acted differently in the past, none of this would be happening. She then walks around the arcade a bit and finds what she refers to as a township card. We then see a portal against one of the walls of the arcade and are transferred through it. Inside the portal is a dark room. A rose appears to us and a message congratulates us. Red text from Charlotte laments, Tia, your dad is coming soon. We cut to black. A message then tells us that King is gone and is not the only person tampering with dreams. Bill is then scorned for his sins of the past. Audio sings us happy birthday as various images flash over the screen. We then listen to audio of Tia telling someone that she got into an argument with her older sister Charlotte. Charlotte thinks that Tia is weak and is incapable of taking care of herself. Tia admits that she has lived in Charlotte's shadow for most of her life and that she is incapable of doing most things without Charlotte's help. Tia speaks with aggression and anger. Interference ends as we are given the choice to continue dreaming or not, which of course we choose to keep going. Our investigation continues in the second episode titled Township.mp4. The video opens with an old Windows home screen. The user selected is named Agent Millie. She navigates to a folder titled Cold Cases and then another folder titled Windsor Disappearances. And then from there we click on a folder titled Township. A notepad is opened. A written message reads, Township has little to do with disappearances in Windsor. It is unlikely that there is a larger conspiracy at play when it comes to this company. Please direct all efforts towards frequent visitors of their locations. Thank you for understanding. From here we can understand that Windsor is the town where the story takes place. Township is a mysterious organization located in Windsor. 
Millie then navigates to a Firefox browser and then goes to Township's website. Township's website is styled after late 90s and early 2000s web pages. There are tabs along the side that read things like rope, smoking, birthdays, contacts, player of the week, and mascot. Township's mascot is a five-pointed golden star. We pick up from the About section that Township wishes to provide new and innovative entertainment. The user then enters an online chat with an employee of Township. To their surprise, they get a response. The chat employee tells us that the company is going downhill, especially with, quote, the whole thing down in Windsor. They follow up by saying that Township is very secretive about their intentions in Windsor. The chat employee then stops responding. Millie then navigates to the Player of the Week tab. The name shown under this category is a user named Char, and you probably guessed it, we have found Charlotte from the previous episode. From here we navigate to the directory, where we learn the definition of an umbra. In short, the website defines an umbra as an explanation for something paranormal. It goes on to say that umbra will often stick to an object after its human death. This explains why certain objects are said to be cursed. For example, if someone has a special connection to a necklace, their umbra will stick to the necklace after death. Or that's at least how I understand it. It is also said that umbras become more and more human over time. With the help of the Chad employee who has now returned, we are able to log on to the Persons of Interest tab using Charlotte's login information. Her account shows three different people, Charlotte herself, her younger sister, Tia, and her lover, a new character named Ruthie. When clicking on each name, we are given a short bio on each of them. Charlotte is described as outgoing and a bully, even. She is often seen in the arcade nearest to her, or caring for her younger sister, Tia. Tia is described as yearning to be an actress, something that Charlotte has been encouraging her to do. Despite this, Tia remains very insecure about herself and is often picked on in school. And finally, Ruthie has an older brother named King. King killed him and Ruthie's parents. King was then killed by Ruthie in self-defense following this murder. We are given a glimpse of a strange video clip attached to Tia's profile before the detective Millie seemingly deletes the township folder on her computer. As Millie logs off of the computer, a distorted face appears on screen. A low voice then tells us that we are not Charlotte and to not try and investigate this case again. In the third episode, titled Clarity, we open on a stage. Red curtains part and Tia appears. She tells us that she is going to inform us on what happened that day. We are then shown a crude animation of Tia and her sister Charlotte's kitchen. Charlotte, who routinely looks after her younger sister, gets her up for school. Tia then quickly rushes to class before she is made fun of and laughed at by her peers. A female classmate in particular tells Tia that she is ugly. In a rather scary sequence, we then watch as Tia is dragged out to the woods by someone we have not seen yet. She cries out for help, but no one is there to save her. From here we switch perspectives back to Charlotte. She decides to call her girlfriend, Ruthie. Charlotte is distressed. She says that she and Tia got into an argument the night before, and Tia stormed out of the house. She has been missing ever since then. Ruthie says that she has not seen Tia. As the conversation continues, we are given text that reads, Harmony. Charlotte is then seemingly transported from her kitchen to a dark room, labeled Harmony's Room. Charlotte uses a flashlight and stumbles upon a pair of legs hanging from the ceiling. A teddy bear sits on the floor. Confetti rains from the ceiling. The woman hanging in front of us is Harmony. Harmony is Charlotte and Tia's mother. Upon losing her youngest, Tia, Harmony couldn't take it anymore and hung herself. We now begin to search for the culprit. An angel flies across a blue sky. 
Text reads, meet Nina. We then see an interrogation room. An officer speaks with Charlotte about her involvement in the deaths of Tia as well as Nina. Charlotte tells the officer that prior to Tia's disappearance, the two got into an argument about Tia being bullied at school. Tia also remarks that Charlotte doesn't let her do anything on her own. Tia then stormed out of the house. The picture then distorts before we get a title card that reads Act 2, the title of it being Harmony's Judgment. Text lets us know that we are taking a perspective shift. A pixelated character walks out onto screen. They remind us that we have been warned not to continue researching the case of Township in Windsor. Despite this, they offer to show us something. Text asks us what our name is before Harmony is typed on the screen, before it then glitches to the name Lewis. We then see Tia standing in a retro-style arcade. We are now in the perspective of Lewis Eden, who decides to speak to Tia. She tells Lewis that she and Charlotte got into a fight, and as a result, she is alone at the arcade. Lewis asks Tia to come to the back room with him. Tia asks, isn't that where Nina died? We then jump ahead to see that the illustration of Tia is now bruised and bloodied. Lewis is asked if he will do as he promised. He says yes, and then proceeds to beat Tia to death. A screen reading, Game Over, flashes before us. The video ends as we get a congratulations and receive a bear. So far, we have a rose, and now we have a bear in our possession. The fourth episode is called Beginnings, and answers a lot of questions thus far. It opens with a POV of Tia being dragged through the snowy woods. A trail of blood leaks behind her. She asks to stop being dragged, as she has lost feeling in her legs. She then seems to wake up in some sort of dark forest, unlike the one we have just seen. A deep voice says, you promised me that we'd live forever, together. We jump in time to September 14th, 1975. Here we can see Jay, Ruthie, Charlotte, and Nina at the arcade together. It appears to be Nina's birthday, as she is wearing a birthday hat. If you recall before, on the township's website, they have a tab that reads birthdays. Similar to other entertainment buildings, they offer rentals for events such as birthdays. The four play a game of truth or dare, and Charlotte dares Nina to lock herself in one of the back rooms of the building. Given what we know about Nina's death, we can assume that this is where things went awry. Following this, we are shown Charlotte walking down a long path. She runs into various different characters before finding a very large one inside of a cage. She asks its name, and the large figure replies, My name is King. King asks Charlotte if she knows Ruthie, to which she replies that Ruthie is her best friend. King is, as we know, Ruthie's brother who killed their parents. King walks Charlotte through this story. The night her parents died, Ruthie had been sitting in bed. She thought that it was weird that her mom and dad hadn't come in to say goodnight to her, so she got out of bed to go and find them. As she approaches the living room, she finds them in a puddle of their own blood. She cries out for help and is greeted by King, who is holding a bloody knife. Ruthie acts out in defense, slicing King's throat and killing him. We flash forward to Charlotte, Ruthie, and Jay at the arcade. They are all talking, and Ruthie seems particularly nervous before the trio are kidnapped and put in the back of a car. They are then taken to a dark room, where a mysterious masked figure tells them that in order to be set free, Charlotte and Jay must kill Ruthie. After a failed attempt at retaliation, Jay caves in and bludgeons Ruthie to death. The masked figure laughs, and it is revealed that they are also responsible for the death of Tia. If you don't recall, the man Tia was last seen talking to was a township employee named Louis Eden. 
Charlotte, in a fit of rage, kills Jay for having bludgeoned Ruthie. Charlotte then wanders through the snowy forest back to town. She collapses on the ground before we hear a sound of an ambulance echoing in the background. The credits play as we are given interview portions from the voice actors featured in the story. As of uploading this video, these are all of the uploads available on Forky's YouTube page. There are a few more uploads not covered in this video, but they are all just trailers cut together for the series, footage that we have already seen. One thing I didn't mention, however, is this. Remember that township website that Agent Millie visited in Episode 2? Well, it exists. It's different from what we see in the series, but it does hold useful information. Upon visiting the website, which is townshipmerch.com, we discover audio of a conversation between Bill and Nina while at Nina's birthday party. From here, it is implied that Bill killed Nina. I know this is becoming a, a game of who killed who, so let's break it down in chronological order. A commenter was kind enough to compile a list of the various dates we see throughout the series. September 14th, 1975 is Nina's birthday party, which is being held at the township building. As everyone is leaving, she runs into Bill, who is an employee at the arcade. They talk, and Bill kills her. November 15th, 1975, Bill's daughter Tia has an argument with Charlotte before storming off. Tia goes to hang out at the township building. Here she is beaten to death by employee Lewis Eden, who then drags Tia's body to the woods and buries her. November 16th, 1975, Charlotte calls Ruthie and expresses concern because Tia never returned home. Meanwhile, Tia and Charlotte's parents, Bill and Harmony, are out looking for the missing Tia. February 6, 1976, Harmony hangs herself following the reported death of her youngest daughter, Tia. December 26, 1976, Charlotte visits the township building and plays an arcade game. Here she speaks with King for the first time. King is Ruthie's brother, as we've established. King tells Charlotte about how King killed him and Ruthie's parents before Ruthie killed him in self-defense. January 15th, 1977, Charlotte, Ruthie, and Jay are all hanging out at the township building when they are kidnapped by Lewis Eden. Lewis promises their freedom if they agree to kill Ruthie. Jay does this, and Charlotte kills him in a mad rage. Charlotte then finds her way out of the woods and back to Windsor, where she is hospitalized for her wounds. February 1st, 1977, Charlotte is confronted by a plush bear in her dreams, asking if she wants to continue dreaming. In Charlotte's dreams, Charlotte finds out that Harmony played an arcade game in the township building that showed her the brutal death of her daughter Tia. We can also maybe assume that Harmony is the bear from the first episode, considering she says, I told you before to not continue. That concludes the story based on all of the dates that we were given. Another thing that I wanted to shed a little bit of light on, what about the emphasis on the umbras? Well, given what we know, that an umbra is the spirit of a person who attaches themselves to an object after death, it would make sense that the kids dying are able to tell pieces of their stories through the arcade machines that are present when they died in the township building. When we think of the title, Sins of the Past, how does it tie into the story as a whole? Well, in essence, it is a tale of revenge. Bill starts the chain by killing Nina. I'm a little bit confused, however, because I'm not sure how Nina is related to Lewis, but Nina's death is enough to make Lewis go after Bill's daughters, Charlotte and Tia. Despite this, I believe the name of the series is centered around Bill's initial sin of taking Nina's life. If you want to support Forky, please give them a follow on Twitter and go ahead and subscribe to their YouTube channel for more Sins of the Past content. I'll leave a link down to the channel in the description below. I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I will see you in the next video.